after they I went out there, got what I needed to patch the trailer. So I ended up patching the roof of the trailer. That way, the brother won't get wet. They should start raining again. So after all that, Stop here for a quick break, get me something to eat, then go back on the road. Monday morning, I'm out here on the road. Just got up probably about a half hour ago. Waiting for this customer to open. It's a customer. I came here before a few times. Um, early in the summer, probably like June, early July. That time, they were real busy. They had trucks parking here. They had um, they had a security. They worked the night shift. They had a um. They didn't have a security booth, but he used to just sit in his car and work the gate. But no, I noticed that when I came last night, I noticed the gate was locked. There was no tractor in the yard. It's a bunch of chassis in the yard. So I'm like, man, things have really changed for them because they normally have a lot of tractors in the yard hooked to um, drive-in and um, containers. There's no container in the yard. There's just a bunch of chassis in there. So I'm just here waiting for them to open. That way I could go check in. There's another truck here also. It's another container truck here. I passed him down the road yesterday when I was coming up. When I got up this morning. Well, I heard when he came last night. When I got up this morning and I see the truck. I realized it was that truck that I had seen yesterday on my way coming up. Now this customer, they have two locations up here that we normally go to. This is the furthest one north. 
this one that normally come in early. They normally come in about five o'clock, four thirty, five o'clock. They normally get you in, but with the um the volume drop the way it did, it looked like they cut back on the hours. I don't know what they used to ship out in those um day cabs. They had a bunch of day cabs hooked to drive van. I'm not sure what they were shipping out in them, but it looked like that went away because there's no tractor in the yard at all. So things are really changed with this container thing, man. And it's not just containers, drive van. It's all around in trucking. Things have really changed. The volume drop a lot. The rates drop a lot. But it's still a volume game. If you have a bunch of trucks and you can move a lot of loads, you're more likely to get loads. So if you're still looking to come haul containers, you can still be profitable. You can still make money. But I recommend if you only have one truck plan on getting more trucks because the more trucks you have the more freight you can haul yeah container come where this customer only get one container or two containers but you have a lot of customers that get multiple containers on the same shipment so you might have a ship coming in with 10, 20 containers going to the same customer. A lot of times if they could just give it to one person, they'd rather just do that. Depend on how, um, depend on the schedule to receive the container at the warehouse. If they wanna, if all 10 containers come in the same day on a ship, they clear within a day or two and the customer want them right away that's when having a lot of trucks come into play because you could move all them containers right away but if you just have one truck depending on how far they're going 200 to 500 miles you can only do one container a day so it's going to take you 10 days to move 10 containers by that time you might have containers start going in um the merge. The customer don't want to pay the demerge fees, so they don't want the container sitting in the port that long. If you take it out, they're gonna have to pay pay your storage to hold it. At the same time, they're gonna have to pay you for pre pull. They're gonna have to pay for chassis for them days, and they might end up going in per diem because they're gonna be out the port for too long. Okay, it's going to take you 10 days to run 10 containers. And then the weekend, if they don't work on, if they don't receive on weekends, that's going to even push it out longer than 10 days. So, stuff like that, you got to consider. If you do decide to come out here, um, are you planning to grow your fleet? Or are you just planning to remain a one-man band, which is just you. You're not interested in having any more trucks. You're not interested in hiring drivers. That gonna cut down on the work that you get, the people that gonna work with you, and how much you gonna get done. Make that decision because I have one. 
it's Tuesday, I'm on the yard. I didn't get it turned in this reefer yesterday because um, you have a damage on the back of it. So when I wanna turn it in, they refuse it. And the place that they go to, they close at four. So I couldn't get it turned it in yesterday. They opened my eight during my pre-trip so I could head on over there. As soon as they open, I could um, turn it in. I'm going to use the chassis and pick up another one that we're trying to deliver today. Um, whenever you have a damage box, they put that green sticker on it. If you go turn it in and they refuse it at the empty yard, they put a green sticker on it just to show that they refuse it. And the damage is at the top, the top left hand corner. That's a little small damage up there. It don't affect the way the box operate. But that's how it is. Some people that pass it for that. Some people going to fail you for it. One thing when they fail you late in the evening like that, you end up with a box the next day. And good thing I didn't have anything scheduled the first thing this morning or else this box would have been sitting here all day today and maybe not turn in today because the yard is going to close at four and if you miss it you miss it and you don't want that box to be out the port too much longer than the allotted time or else you're going to end up paying for it. Because they're going to say you overbook yourself. That's why you didn't get it done. Even though you didn't get it done because, um, because they refuse it. The inside tire needs some air. So I got to put some air in that tire.
put up your red pier line toy. Push in the trailer now. And I'll uh, supply it here too. checking it, make sure you put in enough air in it. Uh, make sure the air actually going in there, you're not just letting out the rest of the air on the tire. So I'm just checking out the tire and I see that I have a screw in it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to un unhook from the trailer. I'm going to pull out from under the trailer so I have more room to see the tire and I'm going to go ahead and plug the tire. I got some time right now so I might as well go ahead and plug it. That way I don't have to deal with it later on. This is what the tire plug kit look like. And whenever you buy a new kit, you come with the tools that you need. I already have the tools, so I don't really need the ones in the kit. But the plugs, that's what I'm going to use. A lot of time when you use them plugs, the rest that leave over, you can't find them. So always make sure I have a spare one. I run a lot of um, scrap metal places. So always pick up a nail or a screw or something like that. Just put this in there, keep turning it, it's like a file. You just go up and down in there a few times. Go on the other side, pick up a 20 foot 
down. I'm getting a forty first. Drop it at the yard, then I'll come back in here and pick up a twenty. Okay, that to the yard. Then later on, we're heading out to the boat to them. And just another day in the port, man. Yesterday I was sitting around looking for um, something to do yesterday. Yeah. Delivering at Target, we deliver a drive van load at Target. It took them almost 12 hours to unload the trailer. So, wasn't sure how long it was going to be. I was sitting around waiting for that trailer to come empty. That way I couldn't go and pick it up. It didn't come empty until later on in the night. So we just end up leaving it there. Somebody got to go pick it up today. Drop it at the yard. And, uh, hopefully if they do right on that detention pay. Because that's a long time to um, offload a trailer. here man this load right here will make up for that we're getting ready to start moving up normally it's two lines right here but when I came I see they only have one line I didn't want to pass anybody and go up because I wasn't sure what they were doing I'll just wait and see once they start moving up. If I see the other lane come open, I'll go ahead and jump over in the other lane. And normally the guy that checked the chassis in the morning, he'll walk the whole line and check them. So by the time they're open, he could just process it all. But I didn't see him come out this morning. Maybe he running late or Maybe he off. He the only one I see do that. The other guys that work here, they don't be going down the line checking the chassis. He try to get ahead of it. That way it don't be too backed up once they open. But we still out here, man. Still out here pulling his containers, still pulling the drive van. Still running power only. Sometimes we get some power only round trips. I try not to do the power only one way, and then you get on the other end and you don't have a trailer. Now I'm looking for another power only one way to come back. A lot of times with those power only one way, sometimes you gotta go a lot of miles to go pick that um that trailer. So, I prefer to do the power only round trip. So, once you, a lot of times the ones we do, we go out with a loaded trailer and we have an empty trailer come back. So, you will load the empty trailer and bring it back. Sometimes we load it back for the same broker, sometimes we load it back for another broker. Only thing I don't like about that loading it back for another broker coming back. Some of these forklift drivers are rough on their um, trailers, and I would hate for them to damage somebody else's trailer. And then either I'm gonna have to pay for it up front, or it's gonna be a claim on the insurance. And more than likely, I'll try my best to pay for it up front, try to keep the insurance out of it. Just like with my trailer, my trailer got damaged. I'm trying to see why this guy keeps backing up. So after five, we should be pulling up, but he backing up. Yeah, with my trailer, my trailer got damaged by the customer last week. The forklift driver damaged the trailer. And I 
one sports will get a um, one sport will get an estimate on it yesterday. That's why I was waiting for Target to finish unloading the trailer. So I put it when I get the estimate. Well, they didn't um, unload it in time, so more than likely by the end of the week I'll try and get over there to get the estimate. I like that um the indicator they have right over the right on the fender over the wheel. I think I'm a I had it on the other truck and I took it off. I might end up putting it back on the trucks. Because um, a lot of times the cars are beside you, you have your indicator on and they can't see it. So it's good to have one up front up there so it's easier for them to see that you're trying to come over. YouTube. It's Wednesday. I'm at the customer waiting for them to open. I think I got up about five o'clock. I heard somebody going in one of these trailers. I heard the forklift going in and out the trailer. So I got up. I thought they were um I thought they start working. But it was just the truck drivers. This place, the drivers, they load their own truck. So the driver was just loading his truck to head out. He was parking this dock. No, I was about three docks over. As a matter of fact, I think I was at this dock right here with a white trailer. And, um, it was a truck backing in beside me on the left hand side. So I got up. I thought they start working. Then the guy he asked me if I could move so he could put his trailer in that dock. Then he took the trailer that was right here beside me. Right now it's an empty space there. He took that trailer. So after that when I lay back down, about an hour later, that's when I heard on a forklift going in the trailer. So that's why I got up and I came and looked. It was a truck in this dock right here. And the forklift was going in that trailer. So I went and asked the guy what time they start. He said they start at eight. But I could, um, once he pull out this dock, if I'm here to pick up, I could back into this dock once he pull out. So that's what I did. And I'm here now waiting for um, them to open. All the truck drivers, they load their truck up. Some of them load their truck up and leave. Some of them um, drop an empty, pick up a trailer that was already loaded and head out. I'm not sure what they haul here, but it looks like they work with small, it looks like it's a small company that have the contract. And they were, all, they were running some older trucks too, cause the first guy I saw, he had a red um, Freightliner Sentry. I forget what's the company that was on it. But that just to show you, man, even with an old truck, you could get out here and get contracts, man. If you have an old truck, if you're trying to get contracts, you keep getting turned down. A lot of times they don't have nothing to do with the year of the truck. You have something to do with um, equipment. like you don't have enough equipment or something along that line. You don't have enough trucks, you don't have enough drivers, or they might not be looking for anybody at the moment. But you just constantly keep reaching out to them. Don't stop. Even when they tell you no, they tell you no this week. Next week, you just hit them up. Hey, I'm checking to see if you have any overflow work that I could help out with. Just something like that. Send them an email, send them a text, um, phone call. What I notice with phone calls overall, a lot of times it's hard to pass the gatekeeper and the 
the gatekeeper is the customer service person who answer the phone or stuff like that. Sometimes you gotta be nice to them in order for them to put you through to whoever you need to talk to to get what you're trying to get. Majority of times it's hard to pass the customer service rep. But once you get past the customer service rep, man, it get a lot easier. And if the customer service rep like you over the phone, you'll get too easy. If the customer service rep is somebody you know or somebody recommend you, it's, it get a lot easier. Getting contracts in trucking is get a whole lot easier, man, when it's um, a networking situation. Like somebody knows somebody that put you in contact with somebody. You get in a lot easier. But when you're just walking in off the street, sometimes you run into a lot of roadblocks that could stop you from getting in there. Sometimes you pull up at these places trying to talk to the um, logistics manager or the warehouse manager or whoever in charge of um, giving out the loads. And the person you talk to at the front desk Sometimes they even tell you whoever you need to talk to is not there and that person is right in there sitting in the office. Sometimes they, they tell you um, they're not taking taking on any new carriers. But if you get recommended by somebody that they know or somebody that they're cool with, they'll take you on. That's just how this trucking thing is, man. But if you try and get contracts, just don't give up. Just keep calling, keep texting, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Um, try every avenue you can. Okay, eventually you gonna get in there. Just keep just keep going at it. Sometimes it take years, but you can get in there. Okay, whoever have it might give it up. Whoever have it might get sick, pass away. Um they don't have nobody to run the company. The drivers, they might lose all the drivers. The one thing you'll notice with a lot of small companies, especially local companies, or companies that run regional where the drivers go out and come back, a lot of those drivers talk to each other. So if one driver leave, go somewhere else, and he getting treated good, he getting paid right, he getting paid on time, stuff like that. He gonna call all them drivers that are still back at the place he just leave. And eventually some of them might leave and go to where he is. So situation like that, you might end up losing your contract because all your drivers leave or all your main drivers leave or most of your drivers leave. So. There's a lot of things that can happen for someone to lose a contract and you get in there. Now, there's different ways you could get the contract too. You could go directly to the shipper to get the contract, directly to the receiver to get the contract, or you could go to a broker, because sometimes a broker that has the contract. I'm just seeing somebody went inside there. I gotta check, see what time it is. Yeah, sometimes it's a broker that have the contract. So you even go to the um the warehouse or you go to the office, wherever the office at, and talk to them and you can't get in like that. Sometimes they recommend you to the broker that they work with. Sometimes they don't. Because I called plenty of places and they wouldn't even recommend me to what broker they work with. They just tell you they don't work directly with the carrier, they go to a broker. And they, some of them won't give up the broker that they work with. Okay, they're looking on it like they don't know you. So right off the bat, they think you're trying to compete with whoever they're already working with. 
So they'll tell you we already have a logistics company that we're working with. Sometimes they give you the chance to explain to them that you're not a broker. You're not trying to get in there as a broker. You're a carrier. You're just trying to move the loads. But some of them don't even give you that chance to get that far. They tell you they're already working with a logistics company and they just hang up the phone. But you, you can get in there, man. Just got to keep going at it. So I'm in the port. I'm here picking up a load. I think it's a light in the cabin. I'm here picking up a load. Loaded reefer I got to drop at the customer. I didn't get to do it yesterday. This was supposed to get done yesterday. I ain't gonna do it. So I had to come out early this morning, get that out of the way first thing in the morning. They say yesterday was the last free day, so I happened to get it before the look like I happened to get it before the system update. So hold on. I ain't gonna say that yet. But once I get out, then I'll be good. But Yeah, once I get out, I'll be good. I'm trying to go drop it, and I still have two other containers that I turn in. One of them I was going to turn it in at five o'clock, but I couldn't take any chance and leave this in here, so I had to come get this first. Then once I uh, drop this, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one in. That was going to go in at five o'clock. I will update the um, appointment on that. But that's all it is, man. Sometimes, sometimes the work gets hectic. You have a lot you gotta do. Sometimes you have a container come up available and you're already on something else. And you might even go to the customer, you go to a customer thinking that they're gonna get you in and out. So you could get back and take care of what you gotta take care of in the evening. And you get hold up at the customer, you don't make it back to uh, pull your box or bring your box into the port, whatever it is. And then, because of that, now you get pushed over into the other day. And sometimes you have something planned for the other day in the morning and you're gonna have to move loads around. Like I tell everybody I run into, man, everybody that um, reach out to me, ask me about running the ports. If you're going to run the port with your own authority, I highly recommend having more than one truck. Because if you have one truck, you're going to run into a lot of situations where, I mean, I'm going to say, if you're running one truck and you're going hard at it, you're going to run into a lot of situations where you're going to have a container that you can't make it to take it into the port or you can't make it pull it out. And sometimes you're going to run into per diem charges or demur charges, but you don't want that to happen too often. And you don't want it to happen too often with the same customer or the same broker that you're dealing with okay eventually they're going to try to um give some of the work to somebody else because they're going to say you can't manage it so if you start out out here with one truck i highly recommend man as soon as possible get a second truck and likewise you have two trucks i recommend getting a third truck because you're going to need the trucks it's work out here, man. You're going to need the trucks. The volume is not as high as it was earlier this year or last year. But if you're constantly reaching out to people trying to get work, you're going to get work. Me, I go at it. I go at it hard, man. Sometimes I'm up late at night, midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm up looking for work. 
Y'all gotta get it. Ain't no, ain't no other, um, you don't have no other option. That's it. I got other options, but I'd rather not do them. So, that's it. That's why I go so hard at it. It's so easy to make money in this trucking thing, man. But that's what it is, man. If you want to get out here and pull containers, you'll make enough to survive and save some money and take care of your trucks and whatever. I mean, just look on all the small carriers around you that have X amount of trucks. See how much trucks they have, see how they're moving. Some of them will give you information, some of them won't give you no information. But it all comes down to networking. Once you gain that circle, once you gain that on that level where you could talk to them or you know somebody that's close to them, you could get information out of them like that. And you'll see that there's money in this thing right here. A lot of people say there ain't no money in hauling containers. Yeah, as a company driver or when you lease on to a carrier, you are the limit. You only can do what the carrier gives you to do. When you're out here on your own, as long as you have the trucks to cover the loads, the sky is the limit. You could go out there and take on as much work as you can move. And somebody gonna give you the work. Because you see the somebody gonna fall off loads, somebody ain't going Somebody not doing what they're supposed to do with the loads, um, constant commu constant communication, picking up on time, delivering on time, not picking up the box before it go in the merge, not taking in the box before it go in per diem, stuff like that. Um, drivers go to the customer and them and the customer not getting along. It's all type of stuff that can happen for somebody to lose some loads and you end up with the loads. Um, people going out of business, owners mismanaging their money. There's a lot of people out here making a lot of money, but they put in the money in other things. Like, you'll see some truck drivers out here driving some trucks where the trucks need tires. The truck need tires, but they're driving a brand new 2023 Benz that they're making a payment on it every month. So, it's a lot of reason why uh, people saying they're making money, but it's money in it. And the more trucks you have, the more volume you can move, which you're gonna end up making more obvious. But one truck is hard, it's, well, it's going to be hard to cut it running one truck. Especially if you're doing local. Mostly local, some regional, it's going to be harder to make it running one truck. You're going to, you could make it running one truck, but you're going to be at a limit on what you can really do. Because if you have a load, a regional load going out 200, 250 miles you go to the customer spend the night get up in the morning thinking that all right they're going to get you in and out the door that way you could come on back and get you a, um, a local to make up the day you get to the customer they say well your product ain't ready your product ain't going to be ready till 11 o'clock 12 o'clock by the time you get in the door get loaded on your way back you hit traffic you don't make it back to the port. The local that you tell the customer you will go pull out and come deliver, you can't do it. So now you go have to call them and tell them you can't make it. That get pushed back into the other day. Not only that get pushed back, the container you're coming back with from the regional run also gonna get pushed back. And you ain't gonna make the port to turn that in. These are some of the reasons why you need more than one truck. 
yeah it's gonna happen when you have more than one truck but you want to get to the point where you have majority of your trucks running and you have one truck that's like a standby truck that's always in the air and now that truck no matter what come up for the most part that truck will cover so it's such an I'm on the yard getting ready to do the oil change on this truck right here I had to go buy the oil and everything this morning so I couldn't start any early this morning it looked like it was going to rain but right now all that clear up so I'm going to go ahead and knock this oil change out also got light to fix and check all the air pressure in the tires grease up the fifth the fifth wheel and that should be it for today now I'm going to saute this kind of go like this do some maintenance work sometimes I bring a box in the port or pick up a box out of the port or as a customer sometimes I have to do that first then I do the maintenance work then if I have a full day of working running rather than the boxes I normally um do whatever maintenance work I gotta do Sunday morning I don't like doing it Sunday morning because that just put you out here seven days for the week but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do so if you gotta do it like that that's just what it is so I'm gonna get the wrench to loosen the drain plug while that's loosen I'm gonna go ahead and get the filter wrench for the right size for the oil filter have all that draining then I'll go ahead and um, change the filter put in new oil it won't take long to do an oil change all the stuff for it is simple tools that you should already have All right, so we got the drain plug out, draining the oil. It was easier to take the drain plug out on this side than the other side. And this cat, you have more than one drain plug. I just take out the easiest one I could get out. So, just gonna let that drain out. Then after that, I take out the filter. I'm going to go ahead and get the filter wrench. I wait until after this completely finished and take off the filter. Because I punch a hole in the bottom of the filter. Once I loosen the filter, I punch a hole in the bottom of it, let it drain. Then I go ahead and take it off. I notice I make less mess doing it like that. Okay, so if you see, that's how I punch a hole in the bottom of the filter, let it drain, then I could take it off without having a whole bunch of oil running down on the side of the filter. You make a lot less mess like this. What I recommend if you're going to do it like this, make sure you loosen up the filter first. That way you're sure the filter could come off. And you're going to put up your new filter. I always wipe up, wipe off where the filter seal it. Make sure there's no pieces from the old filter that you take off that's still up there. And with the new filters, it's whatever you want to do. You could pre-fill it. There's no wrong or right way to do it. Yo! <clears throat> but one thing I always recommend is um. Put a little bit of Vaseline or even a little bit of oil on the rubber gasket. That way you don't put it up there dry. But as far as um, filling the filter up, you don't got to fill the filter up. Some people recommend it. Some people don't. Sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't do it. It all depends how I feel when I'm putting the filter up. But it's not something you have to do. 
and it's not gonna hurt the engine if you don't fill it up. Thank you. 